Dear Wild Rift enjoyers, welcome back to another Rift Guides Wild Rift video and today we're going to take a look at one of the most interesting things in the Wild Rift scene, or generally in the MOBA scene. The most scary one tricks you can face in Wild Rift. But what is one tricking? One tricking is basically just playing one champion over and over and over again until you learn everything there is to learn about that champion. Limitations, itemization, certain tricks and everything there is so you become a master of that champion. But before we hop into that video, let's talk about our question of the day. Are you a one trick? And if so, why are you a one trick? Let me know in the comments below. Our first pick here is Samira. And Samira is one of those AD carry switches, typically not the usual kind of how you want to play an AD carry. AD carries just stay away out of harm's way and attack the enemy from super high range until they can get the job done. However, Samira is different in that regard. Samira wants to go in and literally put the enemy opposition into the dirt with the Infernal Trigger. Samira is one of those champions you can also describe as the AD version of a Katarina, because once she gets those resets in, it's time to style on them. But what exactly makes Samira such a good one-trick champion? Compared to other AD carries, a Samira player needs to know exactly what is going to happen and what is a potential threat to the Samira player. Any type of CC can immediately cancel the ultimate ability, and anything that stops you from getting your style points will drop you and turn you into a useless pile of meat. So if you have trouble doing so, you need to desperately put some more time into Samira because you need to see those openings, you need to understand what you have to block with your second ability, who to dash on, and maybe when do you have to flash into the enemy team to quickly stack your style for your infernal trigger. But this is all something that comes into the later stages of the game. How do you want to play lane? Compared to other AD carries, Samira's lane is not the strongest unless you pair it with a strong support. But if there's something Samira is very good at, it's punishing the enemy's mistakes. If they use their cooldowns on the minion wave, Samira is able to dash in and block incoming CC spells from for example the support and just deal extra damage to the enemy champions. Thanks to the style bonus, she'll gain additional movement speed which will make it easier for her to run down the opposition. The next champion on this list is Aurelian Soul. Yes, you've heard it right, Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul is not a champion I would recommend you to play unless you want to dedicate a lot of time into the champion. The champion has a lot of specifics, starting with the laning phase and overall how you want to approach the game. For example, an Aurelian Soul player can start up with his first ability and electrocute to go for sneaky trades during the laning phase to gain a lead doing so. While doing so, he can also use his passive stars to deal damage to the minion wave and execute them. Everything at the same time. But that's not it. You also need to be aware that your movement is different from other characters, because your damage is linked to your model. If your model isn't in the right position, all your damage will evaporate into nothing. And then, all of your champion's kit is useless. There's also something that every Aurelian Soul player needs to do in order to maximize the efficiency of the champion. You need to have a clear-cut goal as to how you want to play lane. Do you play it for an early rotation? Do you play for an early reset? And how do you want to structure your gameplay from level 2 to level 3 and from level 3 to level 4? What are your goals and how can you accomplish them? Do you want quick trades? Do you just want to push the wave? Like, what is your personal goal and how can you accelerate the game? You need to be active with the camera to see what's happening on sideways and react accordingly seeing a big wave walking into a tower is a signal to you to go there and dive the enemy champion. You can easily do so with your third ability combined with your first ability and then just stunning them for an eternity so they get ran down by your allies. But this is just a small fragment of Aurelian Soul's gameplay. Also something you have to consider is when it comes to objectives Aurelian Soul walks an angle from which you can come in with a big star and stun everyone. After this is done the Aurelian Soul and his team will have an easy way cleaning up. But this is the perfect pixel perfect scenario. There are many things in the game that can stop this from happening and you always need to remember that you need to be aware of what is happening and generally speaking you need to be better at macro than the opposition to make Aurelian Soul work. That's why he's such a perfect one trick champion. If you learn this champion you can have great success but if you play against people that are on the same level as you are you'll find great trouble. The next champion, which is basically similar and is one of the most deadweight champions in competitive, is Jin. Jin has a lovely design, Jin feels very nice to play if you're playing against squishy champions, but other than that, 
he is a bit lackluster. But let's talk about Jin one tracks. Jin as a champion does really well during the laning phase. He actually is a lane bully. He is really crazy during the laning phase and very underrated when it comes to that. But with the support item update and overall laning in Wild Rift, laning is not that important. With the addition of Lord Dominic's regard though, Jin has gained a little bit more popularity. And the champion isn't as terrible as before anymore because he has more access to crit, which means more crit means more damage, which means more smiles for the Jin. As the game progresses, you will also notice that Jin isn't just about damage overall. His use is also in the form of utility. He can engage fights from afar with his second ability and his ultimate ability, and he can lock down people to be chased down by your teammates. So what does Jin have trouble with? It's bruises and tankier targets. He doesn't have as much DPS as other champions and will just be outclassed by any other AD carry that is allowed to freely DPS during fights when it comes to bruiser or tanky targets. When it comes to squishy targets, Jin will blow them up like no other and you'll have a lot of fun with him. The next champion on this list is Soraka. And contrary to public belief, Soraka is an absolute lane bully, similar to Jin. But Soraka has one thing that people underrate massively. It's the pressure from early to mid to late game, because this champion is a scaling monster. And all this champion needs are people that don't immediately die. Which means the tankier your team is, the better Soraka becomes. When it comes to weaknesses of Soraka, there's basically two things I have to mention. Number 1. Fighting into all ranged champions. If there is no melee champion for Soraka to hit her first ability with, the healing capabilities will be reduced a lot. You can change your build to accommodate for Warmox armor and then have some more healing because you have infinite HP, but then the healing power will be significantly reduced because of the lack of HP. The next thing is, your allies are too squishy and get immediately blown up, so the Soraka cannot have any value. Outside of two those things, Soraka however is a broken champion. This champion will allow you to eternally live during the laning phase and commit for very interesting trading patterns. On level 1, Soraka wants to trade HP and use her first ability to hit the enemy champions. Hitting the first ability will grant her 60 HP back over time. While doing so, she wants to fill out the minion wave with the relic shield to gain even more HP back, while also running Adaptive Carapace. Finally, on level 2, the fun begins. If your AD carry is smart enough to play with the Soraka, he'll also have traded away his HP bar. Using his HP bar to take away the enemy's HP bar will enable Soraka on level 2 to hit her first ability, to then use her second ability's reduced cost to heal up her ally after hitting the first ability. Using this, you'll heal your ally for more than 150 for just one ability hit and then healing your ally. That is more than summoner heal does in this instance and will make people literally scream in agony because you're a walking honey fruit on a little cooldown. Once you have 4 points into your second ability, you can cast it twice after casting your first ability for free on your ally. As the game goes on and you get more cooldown reduction or ability haste, basically around 84 ability haste, you can hit your first ability and cast your third ability 3 times if you press it fast enough, basically autocast. Autocasting on Soraka with the second ability will always target the lowest HP ally close to you. Oh, and did I mention after healing an ally 3 times or healing 3 allies, your first ability size and damage will be increased, which makes it easier to hit to then heal people again. So you're chain healing people for 2000, maybe 3000 healing per minute even against anti-healing if you're playing against melee compositions. It is powerful as hell. And the last champion on this list is Draven. Draven is one of those champions that you often see running it down because they have no clue what they're doing. Draven as a champion needs to be aggressive and loves to dominate during the laning phase. When it comes to runes and items, most people believe that crushing crit or going conqueror is the best choice, however that's not true. Going for lethal tempo to just carry a complete fight rather than going for one isolated kill will net you more wins. The same goes for going for different items than usually people go for. Going for a storm razor rush will grant you the ability to crit, but that's not consistent is it? So what about using 3000 gold to buy 2 BF swords to gain 80 AD, which then empowers your first ability by so much that you literally run on anything in your way. With that in mind, you can snowball even harder and complete your Storm Razor into your Infinity Edge and then finally start critting these people away with the raw AD you already have accumulated. It's a very fun thing to do and seriously underrated, especially if you consider the AD scaling on Draven's ultimate when it comes to teamfighting. Because if the stars align and you get a good ultimate, you'll execute many people at once. And that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want more content, you need to come back for more. See you soon.